Uh, I'm going to do another walk and talk. Uh, so I'm kind of walking, holding the camera. Uh, I should call these the uh, forest files or something like corny like that. And speaking of corny, I'm wearing my hood as I walk, not because it's cold, uh, but uh, because I've entitled this one Hierarchy of Hats. I told you it was corny. Hierarchy of Hats. So uh, I can take my hood off now. I've made my point. Um, this is a bit of a motif in uh, a lot of what I uh, cut in terms of videos and audio files. And, uh, you know, I think it's because it's, it's, it's so central, integral to life. It's about identity. Uh, you've often heard and maybe said, you know, I, I wear a number of hats or I need to put this, put this hat down and put on this hat. Maybe it's a father hat. Uh, now you're wearing your brother hat. Um, now you're an employer or an employee. Uh, now you're just a neighborly advisor hat. Um, identity. Uh, what we're referring to is identities that we truly are. And at a certain point, you're operating out of a certain one uh, for a certain situation. And as you operate in that, there's a different measure of, of authority and experience that comes into what you're saying and how you're saying it. It's so spiritual, truly. Look at all those birds there. All the geese are flying in. It's so spiritual. Uh, identity. Uh, and, and so I was thinking, you know, we, 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 we have all these, these variety of hats that we wear, but then there can be a hierarchy of hats. Uh, which is more important? Um, certain hats we wear, certain persons that we are, trump other persons that we are. And sometimes they really do intersect in life. So, for example, uh, you might be an employee. You might also be a father or a brother. Now, something might come up that um, is really pressing in your family relationship and your employer needs something from you, but your brother needs something from you. And maybe both uh, needs cannot be satisfied. And all of a sudden, you have a decision to make about which hat, which person it comes first. What is the hierarchy uh, of of who you are in a particular moment. And it can change depending on certain contexts. Um, you know, the Lord speaks to us about who we are, that we are breathed from Him. He created us. We are His. Uh, you might have heard that powerful, beautiful scripture, Psalm 139, 14, um, where God is saying that He knit you together he, he, he formed you in the womb um, of your mother. God made life and God made you. And it is really critical to our lives and who we are. Not, not as an extra, not as something we acquire. But intrinsic to the very nature of who you are. And what your destiny and your future is. It is intrinsically critical to know that you are birthed of God, born of God, breathed from God, made in his image, Genesis 1, 27. That is your hat. It's the hat of hats. It, the identity that you are in God and of God and everything that he says about you, to you, the hierarchy of hats, a child of God, a creation of God's. That is who you are. Now in this life, because of the nature of this broken life, that does compete at times with other hats we wear, other roles that we are. In some critical moments, sometimes who you are in God will compete and uh, you will need to decide, am I first and foremost a child of God in this issue? Or am I first and foremost uh, an employee, a family member? Um, is, does, the, the, does God go behind you in that circumstance or does he go before you in that circumstance? It happens. But primarily what I'm concerned with emphasizing is the gift that is on offer to you. 
that as we scramble searching for identity, you might be or you might have friends who have gone off in pursuit of finding themselves or losing themselves. I find that kind of comical. One person could be jetting off to truck Vietnam to find themselves and someone else is trucking off to who knows where to lose themselves. And it's all kind of related, but uh, it's pursuit of self and trying to figure out who we are. God tells us who we are. We were made in his image. We come into a broken life now because of our sin and our rebellion. We're made in the image of God. We are spiritual beings. It is deep. Your free will is not that you can just do whatever you want. Your free will is that you are made so spiritual in the image of God that you can choose that relationship or reject that relationship. You li- I mean, it is dangerous. It's like taking a little kid and, you know, letting them cross the road if they want to cross the road. They, they, they cannot determine the consequences of that, but, but they, they, because of how you've made them with their own arms and legs and, and, and certain boundaries, they can walk themselves into danger. Such is the expression of personhood in mankind. And God has made you like that. He has made you spiritual and set you opposite him to be in relationship with him. And if we say, yes, Lord, life in you, yes, we want life in you. We choose you. You have breathed us and and we see you and we choose you. Then God takes us on a journey to introduce us to his son, himself, Jesus Christ. He does that because of our fallen world. And he says, okay, you want life? He says, well, then what's happened in life is because of the choices that, that you've made. There's a brokenness now. There's a fragmentation. And, and I have become you, walked with you, and suffered and died for you so that you can come back into the fullness of relationship with me. And so when we choose God, we choose his son. It says in John 5, he who does not honor the son does not honor God who sent him. God introduces us to Jesus Christ and he says, this is the the bridge, this is the path, this is the light. And as we enter into relationship with Jesus Christ, we enter onto a path that will just become brighter and brighter. It says in Proverbs 4.18, the path of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn, ever brighter until the full light of day. As we lay hold of God, as we lay hold of Christ and we walk the path, that he is. John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way. As we walk the way of Jesus Christ, we are walking in an increasing light for an increasing consummation of the experience of life where we we die and resurrect with Christ to live forevermore. So there is a true name and a true identity that God gives you that is not just a hat you wear, but it's the the truest essence of who you are. And um, I'll just just end with this. I love that mysterious uh, scripture in Revelation. Uh, Jesus is speaking to the seven churches. So we often just associate Jesus' words with the Gospels, but he also speaks in Revelation 2 and 3 through the prophet John, also words of, of Christ. And he speaks to one church in persecution, and he says to them, listen, persevere, stand strong, and to those who prevail, he says, I will give you, uh, 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 written on a white stone, your secret name that only you know. It is just, uh, you know, these are God's children, God's people, God's church, but there's still this fullness of experience of who they are that is going to become known. And um, it's your secret name. Not the name your parents gave you. The name that God gives you and has always given us. But we've lost it in in this life and in in darkness. But in our road with God, in Christ, we on, on a path that is increasingly lit by the eternal light of God, God promises to touch down on us and give us our secret name. Revelations 2.17 and 19.12. God bless you today.